Bienvenidos a Westover Hills Kids en Línea. Estoy muy emocionada porque la lección de, ho de hoy es cómo Jesús volteó todo al revés. Así es, cuando Jesús vivió su vida, volteó todo al revés en modo de que nosotros lo podamos entender. Por ejemplo, Jesús nos enseñó sobre la humildad, poniendo a los demás primero. Por eso nuestra gran idea de hoy es pon a los demás primero. Vamos a decirlo una vez más, ¿listos? Y vamos a hacerle así como que estos son los demás y los estamos poniendo primero. ¿Listos? Pon a los demás primero. Una vez más. Pon a los demás primero. Muy bien, niños. Ahora vamos a cantar y alabar al Señor juntos. Tú fuiste el verbo en el principio, unigénito de Dios. El misterio de tu gloria, revelado en tu amor, cuán hermoso su nombre. Cuán hermoso su nombre es, el nombre de Jesús, mi Rey. Cuán hermoso su nombre es, nada se iguala a Él. Cuán hermoso su nombre es, no hay otro
Al versículo del mes. ¿Están listos? Lo vamos a decir juntos, ¿ok? Dice así, no haga nada por egoísmo o vanidad. Más bien, con humildad consideren a los demás como superiores a ustedes mismos. Filipenses 2.3. Muy bien, ahora vamos a escuchar nuestra historia. The Bible. It's 66 books of history. Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 56. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been plotting to silence Jesus. He called us pretenders, snakes! On the Sunday before Passover, Jesus entered Jerusalem to great cheers from the crowds. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! But even as the crowds swarmed in to see what Jesus would do and say, one of Jesus' closest followers, Judas, went to the religious leaders with a very sneaky plan. What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? How about a cool 30 pieces of silver? Jesus knew these plans, but he also knew that his mission was to face those who hated him and let them take him without defending himself. He prepared his closest friends for this during a Passover meal and then afterwards led them out of the city toward the Mount of Olives. Judas had already left them. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The air cooled as the evening darkened. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter, the most outspoken of Jesus' friends, quickened his step and tightened his hand on the sword he was carrying. All the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. What I'm about to tell you is true. It will happen tonight. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. I may have to die with you, but I will never say I don't know you. Me too. Same. <sighs> By the time Jesus and his friends reached the Garden of Gethsemane, they were exhausted. Sit here while I go over there and pray. As the other disciples settled in on the cold, rough ground, Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him to a grove of ancient olive trees. The weight of what was coming pressed down on him. My soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. We're here for you. We got this. Prayers. The three friends found seats among the knotted tree roots, and Jesus went on a little further. Then suddenly, he fell down on the ground, face first into the dirt. Words poured out from deep inside. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me, but let what you want be done, not what I want. After a short time, Jesus returned to his friends. They had all fallen into restless sleep. Jesus touched Peter's arm. Huh, what? Huh? Just, uh, we're just, uh, we're just praying. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We'll stay awake this time. Got you covered. Again, Jesus threw himself down to pray. His pain was so deep, blood and sweat beaded on his forehead. My father, is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want be done. 
Jesus returned to his friends once more to find them still sleeping. The agony in his spirit forced Jesus to lay his heart out to God once more. He prayed the desperate words again, begging God to take away what was coming. And at the same time, revealing his complete trust in God's plan. Let what you want be done, not what I want. At last, Jesus knew the time had come. He returned to find Peter, James, and John buried deep in sleep. Beyond them, his other followers slept too. Are you still sleeping and resting? The disciples struggled through a fog of sleep, blinking and yawning. Below them, torchlight showed an angry mob climbing up the hill. The men were waving swords and clubs, shouting as they came. Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. Jesus' friends staggered to their feet, and Peter clutched his sword. As the mob marched closer, they could see the man in front of the mob. It was their friend Judas. Judas? What are you doing? The mob had been sent by the Jewish religious leaders. Judas had already explained to them that he would greet Jesus with a kiss, so they would know exactly which man to arrest. Greetings, teacher. Judas ignored the other disciples and went directly to Jesus, kissing him on the cheek in greeting. Jesus drew back and looked Judas directly in the face. Friend, do what you came to do. The mob surged forward as the disciples just stood there, frozen and confused. As men grabbed Jesus, Peter suddenly sprang to life, awkwardly drawing his sword. Should we use our swords? Peter didn't wait for an answer, but he struck out wildly. His blade sliced right through the ear of the high priest's servant. Oh! Stop this! Jesus touched the servant's ear. Immediately, he was healed. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Jesus turned back to the mob and the men who held him. They hovered there, uncertain, in the flickering light of their torches. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courtyard teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that the words of the prophets would come true. No one could respond to Jesus. Instead, they arrested him and led him away. And his friends who said they'd be with him through anything ran away. Jesus made the choice that would bring life to everyone, but that would cost him everything. No es natural que nosotros nos pongamos a las demás personas primero. Es natural de que nosotros siempre queremos ser primero. ¿Verdad, niños? Hay muchas veces que nuestros hermanitos, nuestras hermanitas nos piden algo y nosotros decimos, no, ese es mío, porque eso es lo natural de nosotros querer ser primero. Pero Jesús nos, es, nos ha enseñado de que los demás deben de ser primero. Vamos a pedirle a Dios que nos ayude durante esta semana para poder hacer eso con nuestros hermanitos, nuestras hermanitas, nuestros papás, ya que estamos en casa todos juntos. Recuerden de poner a las otras personas primero. Vamos a orar juntos. Señor, te damos gracias porque tú, Señor, nos has dado el ejemplo de ser humildes y cómo poner a los demás primero. Ayúdanos, Señor, ahí donde estemos en nuestras casas, que nosotros lo natural es querer nosotros ser primero. Pero ayúdanos, Señor, para ser tu ejemplo y dar a los demás ser primero. Ayúdanos esta semana para poder practicar esto. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Gracias niños y recuerden, hay que poner a los demás primero. O sea, vamos a decir nuestra gran idea una vez más. Pon a los demás primero. Una vez más. Pon a los demás primero. Muy bien, Dios te bendiga y nos vemos hasta la próxima.